Hi there. This is just going to be a quick video on how I went about upgrading my hot end fan and replacing my parts cooling fan on my Anycubic i3 Mega. First up, we're going to need to download and print a couple of files from Thingiverse. Firstly, from the Thingiverse user Steadyman, we need to find his file Anycubic i3 Mega E3D V6 hot end upgrade kit. From this, in the files section, or thing files section, we need to download and print the anycubic left cover .stl. And I'd like to make a quick shout out to Steadyman because this cover is ideal. Secondly, we need to print from the Thingiverse user Giggle the fan duct for the E3D all metal hot end 40mm version. Now I'll add here that it is ideal and fits lovely on the V5 hot end. From this in the thing file section we need to download the E3D 40mm duct STL and print. Now once complete they should so look something like this. Once again brilliant pieces of kit. I can't thank the two Thingiverse users Giggle and Steadyman enough. Tools required for this process, which I used, were soldering third hand, hot glue gun for the thermistor connection, wire strippers, soldering iron, Phillips screwdriver, pointy nose pliers, more so for the cutters, heat shrink, solder, allen keys, M3 by 15 volts, M3 nuts, some spare wire, and a Noctua NF-A4X10 12 volt fan. <coughs> the Noctua fan comes with some really good accessories in the, included in the kit. Uh, we have 3M scotch locks in case you're not confident in soldering. We have numerous adapters, connectors, etc. Mounting equipment. This is oops. This is the standard three pin coupler which was connected to the Noctua fan from the factory, which I removed, which I'll explain more so shortly. Once you have all components printed, purchased and ready to go in front of you, it's just a simple case of removing the four bolts, two at the front, two behind, that hold the stock fan shroud in place, removing, and whilst supporting the weight, removing the two connectors for the fan. Right hand side connector is for the hot end fan, left hand side connector for the parts cooling fan. Once the shroud is removed, remove the two bolts on the parts cooling fan, which hold the parts cooling fan in place, and then this shroud can be dis disregarded. On the stock <coughs> parts cooling fan, I simply cut the original connector, which any cubic had used from factory, off the existing fan and simply soldered it in place, therefore maintaining the standard any cubic plug. Now this, as I said before, this fan was a three wire configuration, so I simply disregarded the yellow terminal or the third terminal, third wire, and I simply placed a little bit of heat shrink over there to avoid any hassles. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's that uh, wire has any power going through it. I don't know that. I'm unable to answer that, but it was just a simple precaution, so I didn't have anything shorting out anywhere. Mounting of the fan is to the uh, printed shroud is very easy. It's just a simple case of using four M3 by 15 millimeter bolts, which I found screwed perfectly straight into the holes on the mount and didn't require any further
fixing because they bit into the plastic beautifully. For the parts cooling fan, it was a simple case of removing the fan from the original Anycubic case and utilising the two original mounting boot bolts which Anycubic had used. It was just a case of using them and putting them straight back in with the new printed cover. And once assembled, it looks something like that. Note the additional airflow from the factory shroud to the printed shroud. Hot end side, cooling pan, cooling parts, cooling side. Now, once these components have been mounted as such, you have sorted the wiring on the Noctua cooling fan, like so. We are now ready for assembly. Once we have the everything ready to go, it's a simple case of taking the fan on the shroud I like most personally to orient the wires down. It's a case of placing it on the hot end, making sure that we have all fins accounted for. Yeah, this is going to be awkward, excuse the poor video. And it's a case of snapping it into place. I'm guessing you could have heard that. So there we go. That is now the hot end fan fitted. Next, take your wiring, guide your wiring into place. Sorry about the poor video, I'm using a phone. Once in place, plug in. I have quite large hands, so it's quite difficult for me, given how small these connectors are. Click into place like so. I'll make a quick note here as well. Before fitting the parts cooling fan to the printed shroud, please ensure that you place an M3 nut behind this bolt here. There is a recess for it to be placed in. You can vaguely see it there. Uh, if you don't do that, you won't be able to get the nut in after the fan's mounted, so please make sure you do that. And the second M3 nut drops into that housing up top there. Once you have the fan, fan mounted, like so, one bolt at the front, the top, one bolt down here at the back, it's now a case of placing your last connector. Once again, I have large hands, so it's quite difficult for me. Like so. Now, there we have the completed upgrade. It's literally that easy. Now, once everything's fitted, been turned on and tested, it all works and functions as expected, I re do recommend performing a, a, what's called a PID tune, which simply uh, tunes your hot end um, to operate at a given temperature. Now, I recommend using this particular YouTube video from the user Nillabean, how to PID tuning. This is a very, very helpful video, which will go through the full process step by step. And a quick shout out to Nillabean, because this video is extremely helpful. Thank you again, mate. So, there we go. I hope that this was a helpful video. I apologise once again for the poor video quality because uh, I'm recording this from a phone, but uh, I hope this is helpful. Catches.